the last video we saw how to solve damped oscillator analytically and how to verify that this is a solution of the damped oscillator analytically. What we'll do is we'll do this now with built in mathematical tools uh, using some to tools of calculus also to see how we can do this um, um, with the Wolfram language. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So our job was to find out whether this satisfies a solution for equation number 3 over here and in that process we wanted to find out the constants a, alpha, beta and phi. In order to do this what we will do is we will go ahead and define in, in context of mathematical define a function q of t and we will give it the form a e to power minus alpha t plus cosine of beta t plus phi. That's q of t. We want to find q prime of t. We'll call that as first. That is first derivative of q prime of q of t. So we'll say find mean d of q of t with respect to t. And that'll just give me the first derivative. And you can oh actually there's a mistake here. Q of t is a e to minus alpha t times cos e t plus phi. So first derivative is going to give me two terms, one with minus alpha and the other is minus beta and, and the sign over here. That's what we got when we did things analytically. And for the second derivative, we will again do d of g of t with respect to t, but this time second derivative. So that gives me these three terms and mathematics automatically combined these two terms over here. Okay. Now uh, the differential equation we have was was over here. It was q double prime of t equal to minus q by l c minus r by l d q by d t. And we can go ahead and put that in here. But it's useful to actually go ahead and non-dimensionalize this because whenever we do things in Mathematica it's always better to non-dimensionalize this and, and work because that simplifies our system and can avoid a lot of confusion. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got a charge scale Q which we are going to replace by Q naught times Q. When we do that, we are, we are essentially drawing the scale Q naught out of Q. So this Q is effectively uh, dimensionless. And we also see that the time scales involved in the problem were uh, square root LC and R by L, uh, rather L by R. So we can go ahead and make uh, T go to L by R times T so that this T is dimensionless. This makes that t dimensionless. And with those two substitutions, my equation becomes d square q becomes q naught q dt square becomes d of l by r t squared equals minus q naught q by l c. And I get minus r by l dq by dt, so again it's d by dt of l by r times t and q naught q. Now from here q naught is a constant, so q naught cancels out and I can pull out l by r from here and I get from here d square q by dt square is r square by l square equals minus q by l c minus r square by l square d q by d t. In this equation q and t are dimensionless because we pulled out the dimensions of q and t earlier. Now uh, we see that r square by l square cancels between this term and that term 
which means that I should multiply L square by R square over here. And this simplifies to then D square Q by DT square equals minus we get L by R square C times Q minus DQ by DT. Now in this equation, not only Q and T are dimensionless, but we end up getting this constant, which we are going to just call gamma. And this constant gamma is also dimensionless because we know that L by R was a time scale and so was RC. So this is a ratio of two time scales L by and R and RC and therefore this is a dimensionless. So gamma is also dimensionless. The advantage of doing things this way is that, that we get a simpler equation simply d square q by dt square equals minus gamma q. So I simply get minus gamma q minus dq by dt and that's a abstract equation and this is translated to be solved on a computer system. This is good to be used on a computer system because it does not suffer from physical dimensions. So this is the equation we are going to take for our system uh, and after removing dimensions what happens is we are measuring q in the units of q naught, t in the units of l by r and as a consequence of that I get my equation to be dimensionless and it depends only on a single parameter gamma which is also dimensionless. So we will go, we are going to solve for everything in terms of gamma only a single parameter. So let us go back over here and say put in the equation now. So my equation was the second derivative was equal to so again I will use double equal to and that was equal to minus gamma times q which is simply q of t and and I have got minus look at it from here minus dq by dt so that is minus the first derivative and I am going to go and execute that to see what I get and that is what I get and this is the equation I want to solve. Now this is simply a linear equation I want to solve and I can try solving it using the solve function and I will just simply say solve this for um, alpha and beta. And let us see what happens. That seems to give me a lot of garbage. Well, that was not the most efficient way of doing it. Let us go ahead and look at this again. This is the equation we had. It is saying that this term is equal to that term and what we want to do is we want to read out the coefficients of cosine and sine. But first we can clearly see from here a e to the power minus t alpha is just going to factor out of this thing. So what we should do is we should look at this equation. We should put a minus sign over here, put this in the bracket a equal to 0. That is the equation we are looking at and I want to, I can go ahead and remove the right hand side equal to 0. So this is essentially the function we are looking at and we want to find the roots of this function. Where does this function vanish? For that what we want to do is this is I am going to call as my equation. I am going to read out the sine coefficient and the cosine coefficients of this equation using the built in function called coefficient. I will say give me coefficients of the equation with respect to cos of beta t plus phi and that is a much simpler result and I know that a and e to the power minus alpha t are simply factoring out so let me divide by that and expand that out or simplify we can also use simplify and we get the same result. So this is the coefficient of cosine and similarly we want the coefficient of 
sine term so let me go ahead and get the coefficient of sine term over here and i want to set this to zero so let me go ahead and say this is zero and i want to solve for this well i shouldn't do it like this okay let me go ahead and give it a name so let me call it cos coefficient and let me go ahead and call this as sine coefficient now i will solve for the set of equations cos coefficient equal to zero and sine coefficient equal to zero and i'll say that solve this set of equations for alpha and beta and these are simply algebraic equations so this is going to give me some solution and again i see that this time i get four solutions four sets of solutions every time giving me one value of alpha and beta and here I've got solution corresponding to beta equal to zero. I get the branch of solution, the, the two values of alpha I get for the branch of solution beta equal to zero. For beta equal to zero, we have a overdamped oscillator. There's no oscillation, it just damps out. And the, then the damping factor in the exponential is alpha. And there are two values of alpha that are there. One is one by two, one plus square root one minus four gamma. And the other is one by two, one minus square root one minus four gamma. So this is the overdamped case. We are right now not interested in that. Let's go ahead and look at the underdamped case. Again, for underdamped case, there are two solutions. One is uh, when we have got uh, uh, beta equal to minus one by two, uh, this thing, this square root and plus one by two, this square root. You see that these two solutions are identical. In both the cases, alpha is simply half. Alpha is a constant, which is half. In both these cases, beta is dependent on gamma, and it's the only there's a difference between the sine of beta. Now that doesn't matter because remember our solution was cosine beta d plus phi. If I change sine of beta, cosine is an even function. I can pull the sine out of that. Just changes sine of phi. So changing sine of beta is equivalent to changing sine of phi, and phi is just a integration constant. And therefore, these two solutions are equivalent. I'm only interested in one of them. So let me just take this one because this gives me. Uh, a positive beta and of course the condition for positive beta is is uh, 4 gamma should be greater than uh, 1 when 4 gamma is exactly equal to 1 this vanishes and that's the case of critically damped uh, solution uh, in which case these two solutions become identical and when 4 gamma is greater than 1 sorry when 4 gamma is greater than 1 I get underdamped solution when 4 gamma is less than 1 I get overdamped solution with two possible values of alpha and when I have critically damped solution 4 gamma is exactly equal to 1 and in, in both these cases all these four, four solutions become identical to each other. So that's about overdamped under underdamped and um, critically damped solutions I want to extract this particular solution out so let me go ahead and call this as my solution. And I'm going to go ahead and extract the second item out of solution, which is this. And at this point, I can go ahead and say uh, QT slash dot alpha is this and beta is that. And that's what I get for Q of T. This I'm going to call as Q solution of T equal to, and I want to define the function of T. So that's my solution function now. I need to determine what is a and phi. So for that, I'm going to use the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions say that Q solution at zero is Q zero. So that is simply a cos phi. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to zero. That's my one equation. And the second equation is Q solution prime or with respect to t so i'm going to go ahead and say let me do this separately first so i want the derivative of q solution of t with respect to t and i want to set this i want to slash, set t to zero so i can go ahead and simply say t goes to zero and that gives me this and i want to say this whole thing must be zero that's my boundary condition. So I've got two boundary conditions. 
one is solution is q at zero is zero or rather sorry q at zero is some constant q zero and derivative of q at zero is zero so that is the second equation which i'll put that together over here so now that gives me this set of equations which i should simultaneously solve to figure out what is a and phi again for that i'll use solve and i'll simply say go ahead and give me um, for these two set of equations give me a and phi and that should give me a and phi in terms of that should give me n phi in terms of q0 and here we go so we get uh, a bunch of values bunch of bunch of solutions again and if you closely examine them most of these solutions are equivalent to each other uh, and we will just take the solution in which a is positive which is these two cases because changing the sign of phi changing the sign of beta i can change the sign of a um, or adding a phase of uh, pi by 2 or 2 pi i can change the sign of a so let me just go for a uh, positive branch solution which is where a is positive so this is these two cases and over here the only difference in the the, the two solutions is the sign of phi which is uh, just changing by uh, which is positive here and negative here and therefore these two solutions are equivalent because cos is an even function so i can take any one of these solutions so i'm only interested in this particular branch of solution i can go ahead and extract this out again this is uh, i'll go ahead and call this boundary condition solution and from bc so i want to extract the fourth third item which is this particular case and i'll go ahead and in my q sol of t i'll substitute this condition and this gives me the final function which i'll go ahead and and call as um, q final of t as a function equal to and of course at this point you may want to substitute a value of gamma also so substitute some value of gamma that is greater than 1 by 4 because we are looking at under damp case so let me go ahead and put in put in gamma equal to 2 and that gives me the solution you can go ahead and make a plot of this so plot q final of t uh, with respect to t from 0 to 10 Now, this is a q0, so let me substitute q0 also to some value. Let me just say this is 1 because q0 was actually 1 in our dimensionless case. In fact, that's what we should have done here. q0 was 1, so then I don't need q0. And now I can go ahead and make plot of q final. We get a very beautiful plot here of a damped harmonic oscillator. To add to the fun, we can actually go ahead and realize that this q final is a function of uh, gamma. Gamma is the ratio of time scales that involve the pro problem ratio of damping time scale and the oscillation time scale. Uh, so we'll go ahead and call this a function of alpha and t. And that's that. And we'll go ahead and manipulate this and we'll add manipulation parameter as sorry that was gamma not alpha this was gamma of t and manipulation add gamma here so plot is respect to t but i'm going to manipulate the parameter gamma here and i'm choose some small value of gamma um, let's see what does gamma mean gamma gamma was l by r times c so a large value of gamma uh, means oxidation is dominant small value of gamma means uh, damping is dominant so we'll take gamma to be 0 0.12 well it, gamma has to be in 1 by 4 so we'll take it to be 1 by 4 onwards to um, large number like 4 and of course gamma equals 0 it doesn't like so we could have said here 
actually slightly better slightly larger value than 4 so 0 0.01 so that's just about uh, critically damped and then as I increase gamma oscillation starts to dominate and we start to see the damping become smaller and smaller there we go we've solved this problem completely using mathematica's built-in functions derivative function solve function coefficient function and you see that it helps you avoid a lot of analytical mistakes that you can make when you are doing um, solving problem by pen and paper all right we'll uh, this will be all for today and the next lecture we will take another example of damned oxidator.